Hi guys, today we are going to be talking about an overview of machine learning and showing a classification algorithm. Basically today we are not going to be writing any code, we will just be talking about the concepts of some of these things, machine learning itself and um, the flow chart of how you train a classification algorithm. So let's get to it. So basically what we have on the menu today is machine learning itself, types of machine learning, machine learning algorithms, train a classification model and evaluating your model. So today we are actually focusing on classification algorithm, which is a type of supervised learning. We'll get to that later on. Moving on. Machine learning. So machine learning is actually defined as you teaching your computer how to do different things without you explicitly programming them on how to do that thing. Okay, for example, you want to train your computer how to solve a puzzle. Yes, there are different ways of solving a puzzle, but if you program your computer that, okay, when you encounter a puzzle like this, you take this way, you take this way, you take that way. That's, that type of programming is called explicit programming. But in machine learning, you don't program your computer like that. What you do is you just give the computer a enough data about the puzzle, enough information about the puzzle, and the computer learns and find different ways of solving the puzzle. That way, you give it the puzzle which you have on, on you give him the problem of the you give him the puzzle which you have on your hand right now, which you are able to solve, and it helps you to solve it. And you bring another puzzle with the com which the computer have never seen before, and it still tries its best tries its best based on the information you've provided to him to the computer to solve that puzzle in a simple word machine learning is like when you're learning yourself in school when you get when you go to the mathematics class after the mathematics class and you're given other mathematical problems which are not among the example your lecturer or your teacher solved in class you are still able to try your best in finding a solution to those questions. That is exactly what, what machine learning is. The ability of a computer to perform well on a problem which it has not actually seen and which it has not been explicitly programmed to solve. That is basically machine learning. So machine learning depends extensively on data. It requires data for you to be able to train a machine learning algorithm, you require data a good amount of data right so types of machine learning basically we have three major types of machine learning but uh, we will not be talking about reinforced learning today we will be focusing on we will not be talking about reinforced learning today we will be focusing on supervised and unsupervised learning so supervised learning is actually divided into two which is a uh, regression and classification we will get to that and then we have unsupervised learning which is majorly clustering now, what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? In supervised learning, you usually have two things. We call one target column and we call the other ones feature columns. Target column and feature columns. Now, in our case here, in this first example, in this first data set above here, the target column is the survived column. Why the feature column is every other column aside the survived column. Because the survived column is the column we are trying to predict. And what we are using to predict the survived column is these feature columns. And for this second data set here, the target column, as you guessed right, is year, yearly amount spent. That's the target column because that is the column we want to predict. And the remaining columns here are the feature columns. So why is supervised learning different from unsupervised learning? So let's see that. In unsupervised learning, you don't have a target column. In unsupervised learning, you don't have a target column. You just have a series of columns. And that is the major difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Supervised learning, you have a target column. In unsupervised learning, you don't have a target column. Now, since we are focusing on classification, we are going to be focusing on supervised learning. Since, it is, is, since classification is a subset of supervised learning, let's talk about it a little bit. And you know we have two type two very two different type of supervised learning. We have the classification and the regression. Now for the classification, you are predicting a discrete or categorical value 
in the sense that discrete in the sense that the amount of values that can occur in the target columns are limited are limited in the sense that let's say you want to predict whether someone passes an exam or fails an exam what you are predicting is actually two whether the person passes or fails that's two it is discrete but in case of regression you're actually predicting a continuous value for example um, you want to predict the score that this person will now score in the exam you know in classification you are predicting whether the person passes or fails. now in regression you are predicting the score itself and you know the score can actually vary from 0 to 100 it can be 0 0.5 it can be 1 it can be 1.5 and it can also be 90.5 so basically that is a continuous variable but then in the real sense most of the time the continuous variables that you are going to be working on are not really even going to be having a little small range as that but then even with a range as small as that you can't call it a classification it's a regression for example in our data sets here for this first example the first example yes you actually what the first example is actually a titanic data set which means and you are basically trying to predict whether this person survives or not so the target column is survived so zero one zero one that's the column you're predicting so zero for the person doesn't survive and one for the person survives so you can see you are predicting just between zero and one but in this case of this second data set here which is yearly amount spent this amount as you know can go as high up as billions and can come as low as zero depending so basically that is like the major difference between class between classification and regression don't forget classification you are predicting a discrete variable and in regression you are predi you are predicting a continuous variable that is the major difference between the two so now let's dive into machine learning algorithms now remember that we have continuous supervised and unsupervised learning all right so in but then we are focusing on supervised learning all right supervised learning so take your attention here supervised learning <coughs> and classification specifically but we can actually go through every other thing the problem is that we don't have enough time to explain it so we can treat this in our lecture but in this current lecture let's just focus on classification so basically in classification we have different algorithms we have knn which stands for k nearest neighbors we have trees these are we have trees we have logistic regression now logistic regression might sound more or less like you know we have classification and regression no so logistic regression is actually not a is actually not a an algorithm is actually not an algorithm that is used for regression problems it is used for classification problems then we have naive base and we have support, support vector machines also known as svms if you want to know more about this classification algorithms because you are actually meant to understand the mathematics behind them so if you want to understand the mathematics behind them i will add a link below in this video you can click on the link to read more about them now training an algorithm training an algorithm as a flow chart the process you take in training an algorithm first thing you want to do is you acquire your data when you want to train an algorithm then after acquiring your data you prepare your data in the sense that when you acquire data from its source the data is not going to be clean it's going to contain the, a whole lot of errors so it is your duty to prepare your data by pre-processing it by doing exploratory data analysis by clearing the data by fixing the missing rows <coughs> by doing feature engineering and any other thing that might be necessary for your algorithm to predict very well then after that, after preparing your data, the next thing you want to do is you want to split your data into training and test set. And why do you want to do this? You want to split your data into training and test set so that after training your algorithm with the training set, you use a test set to test the performance of your algorithm. We are going to see this in action if you don't understand very well what I'm talking about now. When you watch the next video, which I am going to be training an algorithm, you will understand better. So after that, you train a model, and after training your model, using the training data set that I told you, you split, you split based on training and test data sets. Most of the time, you split 70-30. The training data set is going to be 70%, and the test, testing data set is going to be 
30%. But this depends on the size of the data you are working with. If the size of the data you are working with is very, very large, you usually reduce the testing set. So moving on. The next thing you want to do is you want to evaluate your model. Why do you want to evaluate your model? You want to evaluate your model so that you know the next step to take based on your model's performance. So if your model is not performing up to the percentage you want it to perform to, you can either go back to, you might either have a problem in preparing your data, maybe you did not prepare your data very well, or the source of your data, or you get more data if you are overfitting. And other times, you usually want to train your model again. You usually want to train your model again using another algorithm. Another algorithm. So, but most of, it, but many times, is one of these two things. And you also want to check your algorithm you are using, whether you are using the correct algorithm on the right problem. Then after you've done evaluating your model and you're satisfied with what you got, you can now deploy to a web service, to an application, to a website, different things you can do with your model. And that is that. So basically this is like the, the life cycle of a typical data scientist. You wake up in the morning, you wake up on a good day, you get to work. Is it that you have data already gotten for you or you are the one getting the data? There are different ways to get data. Is that by scraping or by survey, by web scraping, by doing surveys, inputs into a device and so many other things like that. Now evaluating your classification model. The first evaluation metric you are going to be looking at is confusion metrics. Now confusion metrics is called confusion metrics because it can actually get you confused and you need to pay attention here. So we have this classification using KNRS classifier. This is the confusion matrix we got from the, we are going to see this classification in action in the next video. So basically it's saying that safe 142 and also this same safe and then risk again 15. Basically this 142 here shows that it's predicted out, uh, it predicted 142 plus 15 as safe. While you, while, while you asked the algorithm to predict on the test data set, it predicted 142 and 15 as safe. But unfortunately, which means it predicted a total of 157 as safe. Unfortunately, 15 out of 157 is actually not safe. That is why this is here. And then the same logic goes here. It's predicted 75 as not safe. But out of the 75 it's predicted as not safe, one is actually safe. And that brings us to the confusion matrix itself. What is true positive? What is what is TP, FP, FN, TN? TP stands for true positive, FP false positive, FN false negative, and TN true negative. And I'm going to be defining every one of them here. So true positives are positive classes that we are correctly classified as pos positives. So this, as I said, is classified 157 for 157 in dance, for 157 cases classified, it classified 157 cases as safe. Unfortunately, only 142 is safe and 15 is not safe, right? So this 142 is true positive because it is actually safe and it is classified as safe. Now, true negatives are classes that are correctly classified as negative. Now, true negative here. Yeah, as I said, 75 or class was 75. In 75 instances, 75 instances were classified to be risky. But then one out of these instances is actually not risky. So 74 is risky. So it classifies 74 that are actually risky as risky, which is correct here. Those are true negatives. Now false positives are negative classes that are wrongly classified as positive. Yeah. As you can see, it's classified it as safe, but then it was risky. So into it's a little bit tricky, but you, when you take your time and watch this part of the video over and over again, you should be able to get it. So it's classified 15 as safe, but then they were actually risky. All right. Then false negatives are positive classes that were classified as negatives. In this case, this one here, it, it was classified as risky. Unfortunately, it is actually safe for investments. So that this is the confusion matrix. The next 
the next um metric we're going to be looking at is classification report so for the classification report um I, i'm currently running out of time we can actually read this so it, it, for the precision which is what you can see here precision is actually the ratio of true positive to the sum of true and false positives which means you can go back to your confusion matrix here and check it and confirm whether you get the value meanwhile you recall is the ratio of true positive to the sum of true positive and false negative right so basically your precision is telling you how well your algorithm is predicting what it's meant to predict is it predicting the true is it predicting the safe as safe and risky as risky or is it doing it the other way around how well is it doing this things now recall is doing almost the same thing but in a different way you can actually read there or you go to the um psychic lens web page to read on classification reports then we have the f1 score we have the support i'm very sorry i, I cannot go through all this but you can actually read this on this slide this is well it is self-explanatory if you have any question you can always hit me up then we have other metrics we have accuracy score we have rc score we have rc score we have rc score and we have, and we have a lot of more on this so you should read up on all these metrics because they can come up in different ways and depending on the challenges you're facing if you're ch facing different challenges you might actually need to be looking at one of these metrics to know whether you are, you are, you are actually conquering your challenge or your challenge is conquering you so uh, a quick check uh, i believe i have explained um, machine learning we've talked about the types of machine learning and then we talked about classification machine learning algorithms we've gone through the flow chart of showing a classification model and then we've gone through the evaluation metrics for our model performance all right so thank you for watching and that will be the end of the lecture